Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Unfog with Dr. Atahar Parveen. In this lecture, I am going to finish the electronics and communication chapter of HSTR and uh, also this lecture would be useful for TET, CRIS, Karnataka TET, KVS and uh, all other uh, competitive exams based on the teacher's job. Before starting the lecture, I would like to remind you all to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet. And also if you like my work, please do like this video and also share among other aspirants and your friends. Also I have created a telegram channel. You can join that channel. In that channel we discuss uh, all about HSTR, Maths and Science. Uh, not only HSTR, we discuss about GPSTR, CRIS and, and all competitive exams based on the teacher's job. Also in that telegram channel we keep discussing science and maths based on uh, all the teachers competitive examinations and also if you all need any uh, material or question paper or syllabus i keep uploading it there in the channel okay now this is the fifth lecture of electronics and communication chapter this was the syllabus for the chapter this syllabus is based on hstr and Christ. In, from this uh, syllabus I finished so much of syllabus in my previous four lectures of electronics and communication system. In this present lecture, I am going to finish the last part based on communication, only communication part. Okay. So by this, I will finish this entire chapter electronics and communication system. So let's start. Now communication system. What is communication system? Basically, what is communication? Communication means it is nothing but act of transmission of information right act of transmission of information means uh, either we are sharing or giving or we are receiving when i am talking to you all i am communicating with you all right so this is what is the act of transmission of information and also every living creature in this world it experiences the need to give or receive some information this is communication Basically, communication has three essential elements. One is transmission, the other is the medium or the channel and the last is receiver. When I say transmission, the transmission is done by transmitter. Then the medium and the channel means through which the transmission is done and then the receiver which collects that information. You can see this block diagram will be more clear. This is what is communication, the transmitter, the channel and the receiver. If I talk roughly, if I give a simple example, when I am talking, I am the transmitter. The internet is the channel through which you are getting the transmission and you are receiving it at your mobile phone, for example. Okay, so this is how the communication system is put together by transmitter, channel and receiver. Okay. Now, how can this communication be done? Means what are the modes of communication? There are two basic modes of communication. The first one is the point to point communication. Point to point communication means if the communication is taking place over one link between one transmitter and one receiver. Means there is a single transmitter and a single receiver. Telephone is the best example for point to point communication. When I talk over phone, I talk to a single person right i am also a single person and i am also talking to a single person there the point to point communication is going on the other mode of communication is broadcast what happens in broadcast means there are large number of receivers the transmitter is only one there is a single transmitter but receivers are large number of them for example radio one guy is talking in the radio but it is transmitted to all the radios, isn't it? So many people are receiving it. So many people are receiving whatever is told in the radio. Or television. So many people are watching television at a time, right? So that is known as broadcast. So remember, there are two modes of communication. One is point-to-point -point communication. The other one is the broadcast. Now, according to our HSTR and Christ syllabus, we need to have uh, more information about broadcast. We need to read it elaborately in a more descriptive manner. So, let's know more about it. The broadcasting is of two types. We gave example of radio and TV, right? 
so they are the two types of broadcasting one is the video broadcasting that is the television of course in television you have video and audio broadcasting and then the other one is the audio broadcasting that means only sound is transmitted the example for this audio broadcasting is radio now both this radio and tv broadcasting both of them they need one receiver and one transmitter transmitter will transmit the signals and receiver will receive those signals Let's talk about the working of radio first. How does radio work? See, first of all, radio. What is happening there is the electronic transmission of audio signals is happening. These audio signals are nothing but sound signals, right? These sound signals they are transmitted by radio waves. How are they transmitted? They are transmitted through an antenna, and these transmitted signals they are received by a radio receiver, and this radio receiver it is belonging to the public audience. see before 10 to 15 years what was happening at that time no internet right especially in villages we can see in kannada movies also in villages what was happening near a tea stall or near one uh, uh, big tree there is one big uh, uh, radio where all people they are gathered and they are hearing what all is told in the radio right it could be a cricket match commentary or it could be a news so there that receiver was there that receiver was receiving the transmission signal and people is to hear that was belonging to the public audience so people could hear everything from the radio so people is to gather at that place and they is to hear the radio now what are the applications of radio see what all i am talking about radio is 10 to 15 years back at that time there was no internet right at that time especially in villages radio was everything radio was only the one means of communication there based on those times only i am telling you the applications also nowadays everyone have phone and internet is there and they can have all sorts of facilities with the internet but at that time radio had lot of applications right the main application was that it provided the real information it gave the news and it provided the recent updates what all is happening around the world people used to know only through the radio so when we read about radio this was what we were taught at that time there was no internet and phones right and then people preferred radio also at that time why because see everyone was not having so much money to buy television and all that right even the antennas were not there those uh, connections were not there first of all there was no electricity in many villages so the advantages of radio were vast at that time like it was a low cost people could buy radio with less money and there was a flexibility it was portable right the small small radio was was there so that radio because it was very small it it was portable also right people used to take it anywhere the way we are taking phones now people could take radio there along with them they could carry in their journey also so there was flexibility with that radio and it gave vast coverage means see if you are in a small village the radio it gave you the state news the country news and also the world news so it it had a vast coverage more than television in fact okay so these are the advantages of radio now let's know how is tv broadcasting then tv broadcasting means i told you right here not only video the audio signals are also transmitted but this is a separate service actually it is not like radio but it is a separate service but it uses radio frequencies only the radio frequencies are used to broadcast these radio signals but one thing is common is that tv signals they can be broadcasted through a transmitter only like the radio tv signals can also be broadcasted through a transmitter and uh, here because we are transmitting two things right one is sound the other is picture means video and audio sound it is transmitted with frequency modulation pictures or the video it is transmitted with amplitude modulation so this can be asked as mcq you should know this sound is transmitted with frequency modulation and pictures are transmitted with amplitude modulation and all these waves they are broadcasted from a tv tower okay the tower is very very important with the tower only all these waves are broadcasted there are few basic terms which we commonly use in electronic communication systems let us define them here because see i will not go into much deeper of this chapter but i make a point i make it sure that i give all the important points to you all 
so if you want to know about communication systems it is very much important for you all to know these basic terms okay for example a transducer transducer means it is a device it is used in communication system what type of device it is it is a device which converts energy from one form to another means one form of energy is converted into another form of energy usually this transducer it converts a signal in one form of energy to signal in another form of energy when i am telling that the energy is converted i mean to say that the signal is converted this is done by a transducer next one is a signal now we are talking about the signal conversion right but what is a signal signal means it is nothing but the information which is converted in electrical form and suitable for transmission now what is the signal signal means it is a information which is converted in electrical form and it is suitable for transmission you can say that signal is a wave for rough example you can just keep it in your mind a signal when i tell something called signal i mean to say that i am talking about a wave you can just roughly you can have an idea so this information which is converted in electrical form and is suitable for transmission is called signal and this signal it can either be analog or digital this you have to remember it can either be analog or it can be digital form now there is something called noise there is some noise in the signal what is that noise noise is some unwanted disturbance when teachers tell students in the class don't make noise they mean to say that don't create that unwanted disturbance the same thing is put here for signal also if there is some unwanted disturbance in the electrical signal then that unwanted disturbance is known as noise and always our aim is to remove that noise from the signal so we do some procedures okay if needed we'll talk about that also in this lecture then comes the transmitter what is a transmitter it converts the message signal produced by the source of information into a form suitable for transmission through a channel and subsequent reception means see transmitter means it is a device it will convert the signal by taking a source of information it will it will make some suitable for transmission through that channel and then receiver can receive it okay this is the function of a transmitter then is a receiver receiver means it is a device which will collect that transmitted uh, signals right so it is a device which extracts the original signal from the modulated signal modulated means i will talk on this word later i will address this topic also in this lecture only right now just think that receiver is a device which will extract the original signal from the transmitter you can say now if there is a loss in the strength of this signal means if the signal if it becomes weak while propagating through that medium then you call that there is some attenuation in that signal means the loss of strength of a signal while propagating through that medium it is known as attenuation now because we are talking about the medium see we are talking about two things basically here one is the signal which is propagating through the medium the signal and the medium so when we talk about the medium we should know how there is a propagation of that waves in atmosphere also now basically those waves are electromagnetic waves because see whatever the communication is happening that is happening by radio waves right and radio waves they belong to electromagnetic spectrum if you are uh, jpstr uh, aspirant or hstr aspirant and if you have watched my previous lectures based on electromagnetic uh, spectrum you will know that radio waves they belong to electromagnetic waves that's why when we talk about the propagation of radio waves we are talking about the propagation of electromagnetic waves only and how do these waves propagate in atmosphere we should know about that right we should have little bit idea already it's not needed because if you have attended those lectures of electromagnetic waves which are there in the youtube in my channel i will give the link in the description if you want you can go and watch it also if you attend those lectures then you don't need to have uh, this idea again here you already you will have it that idea you will have it about electromagnetic waves still i am giving you a, a brief review here see 
propagation of electromagnetic waves first of all it depends upon the properties of waves and environment isn't it what type of wave is there and what type of environment is there means what is the medium either it is air or water or vacuum that is also important next is what are electromagnetic waves basically if a charge is oscillating harmonically with frequency and it produces electric and magnetic fields at that point those fields they vary sinusoidally with frequency sinusoidally means sine wave simple wave the wave which we usually we denote it by sine wave right so com combining together the electric and magnetic fields at that point if they are varying sinusoidally then the charge it will oscillate harmon harmonically with that frequency n now this electric and magnetic fields in that electromagnetic wave they are at 90 degree to each other means they are perpendicular to each other and what is the direction of that fields they are along the direction of propagation of the wave all this figure and everything i have discussed there in that lecture i will give the link in the description i am not discussing it here again because see the lecture will become lengthy there is no point in repeating the same things instead you all will get bored and you all will feel that madam is teaching the same things that's why i am not uh, giving it here i will give the link you go and watch it there here i am just giving you the gist the idea of propagation of electromagnetic waves in atmosphere because we are talking about communication right now electromagnetic waves they do not require any material medium even in vacuum they travel right and they propagate through free space with the velocity of light and what is the velocity of light the velocity of the light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second and also it is equal to the ratio of amplitudes of electric and magnetic fields means e not upon v not where e not is the amplitude of electric field and v not is the amplitude of magnetic field the speed of light means c it is equal to e not upon v not so these are the points which you have to remember relating to the communication systems now this wave propagation it can happen through two ways one is through sky and the other one is through space means the first one is the sky wave propagation the second one is the space wave propagation sky wave propagation means if the radio waves from transmitting at antenna if they propagate through sky then you call that the wave propagation is sky wave propagation how do they propagate they propagate through sky so as to reach the receiving antenna there are antennas right nowadays so there are so many types of antennas which we keep on the Uh, roof of our home also so these waves they propagate through sky so as to reach the receiving antenna after reflection in the ionosphere first the waves will go it will hit the ionosphere and then from there it will get reflected this type of wave propagation is called sky wave propagation or ionospheric wave propagation means i'll repeat it again the radio waves they go to the ionosphere they hit the ionosphere then they get reflected back then those are received by antenna this is known as sky wave propagation in space wave propagation what happens the radio waves from transmitting antenna they reach receiving antenna either directly or after reflection from the ground or from troposphere here there is no role of ionosphere you know there are many layers of uh, atmosphere right the ionosphere troposphere exosphere there are so many layers right that i am not going into much deeper here but still just to remember that there is one uh, layer which is ionosphere there is the other one which is troposphere there is the other one which is stratosphere if the reflection is after hitting to the ionosphere then it is sky wave propagation if the reflection is after hitting to the troposphere then it is space wave propagation so if the wave propagation is after reflection from troposphere or after reflection from the ground then that type of wave propagation is known as space wave propagation or tropospheric wave propagation or it is also known as line of straight propagation i am trying to give you more and more information in short okay see you never know what type of questions are would be asked in hstr based on what things they will ask we don't know but what are important things it's better that we know all those points okay now let's talk about modulation earlier in the starting of this lecture i told you that i will talk about modulation right so what is modulation first of all modulation means see if there are low frequencies they cannot be transmitted to long distances easily it is tough they disappear while moving only therefore what 
they do is they superimpose high frequency upon that low frequency that high frequency is by a carrier signal that carrier signal it is superimposed on low frequency thereby making that low frequency also higher so that it will not disappear okay see i'll give you one example if i am standing far away from a person and if i am talking i am talking the waves are going but they will not reach to that person's ear instead if i use a mic what will happen that low frequency signals they will be superimposed by high frequency carrier signals and they are modulated means the amplitude will be increased so that whatever i am talking those waves will be reached to the person's ears i am making sure that the waves reach means i am modulating the signals okay i hope now you understand so low frequencies they cannot be transmitted to long distances therefore they are superimposed on a high frequency carrier signal by a process known as modulation how can this modulation be done this modulation can be done in two ways one is the amplitude modulation which i just told you if the amplitude of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the modulating signal then the process is called amplitude modulation another modulation is the frequency modulation fm amplitude modulation was am frequency modulation is fm when the frequency of carrier wave it is varied in accordance with modulating signal it means you are changing the frequency here means you are increasing the frequency here the process is called frequency modulation now we understood that the signals are nothing but the frequencies right these frequencies together means the band of frequencies together is known as bandwidth now let's understand what is the bandwidth of transmission medium see there are different types of transmission mediums for different bandwidths commonly we use a wire free space and fiber optic cable these two things are used for transmission the wire free space and fiber optic cable coaxial cable means it is also another type of cable which is widely used wire medium means the medium becomes wire here this offers bandwidth of approximately 750 megahertz we are talking about frequency right bandwidth is nothing but band of frequencies so the unit will be hertz it is 750 megahertz this type of cables they are normally operated below 18 gigahertz means if it is above 18 gigahertz then this coaxial cable will not be helpful and communication through free space using radio waves it takes place over a wide range of frequencies from few hundreds of kilohertz to few gigahertz kilo means 10 to the power 3 hertz giga means 10 to the power 9 hertz optical communication through optical fibers it is performed through frequency range of 1 terahertz to 1000 terahertz now regarding this optical fibers i will not explain it here i will explain it in the chapter optics so that's why i'm not talking much upon uh, optical fibers here but just remember that optical communication can be done through optical fibers and the frequency is 1 terahertz to 1000 terahertz which is basically the frequency of microwaves to ultraviolet waves the electromagnetic spectrum if you see you will understand this and these offer transmission bandwidth more than 100 gigahertz so these points no maybe it will not make much sense at this time because i am not talking much upon all this i am not giving basics of all this but then you have to remember these values the frequency values that's why i have put these points here they can ask as a mcq right in hstr and cris so we are not going to take risk here now let's talk about the internet see i am going line by line according to the syllabus of hstr and cris only i am not going out of syllabus i am making the syllabus very short but still i am not missing any point so according to your syllabus we have to learn about the internet also first of all what is internet it is a system with billions of users worldwide it permits communication and sharing of all types of information between any two or more computers which are connected through a large and complex network this internet was started in 1960s but it was opened for public use in 1990s with the passage of time it has witnessed a tremendous growth and it is still expanding its reach we all know right even you and me we are able to communicate using the internet only in fact i am able to give all my lectures through the internet only i am 
able to make the HSTR classes reach up to you only through this internet. If internet was not there, it was not possible, right? At that time, then again, offline, we should have, you should have come to my home and then I would have taught you. It was like that. Or I should have conducted some coaching class where you would have come and sit and I teach you. Because of this internet, things have become very easier. Now, what are the applications of the internet? We all know, right? But still, we'll put it in lines and we'll understand point by point because we are preparing for a computer exam, right? Okay. First and foremost, the main application of the internet is the email. What is an email? It permits exchange of text, graphic material using email software. We can write a letter and send it to the recipient through internet service provider. See the full form, internet service provider. It is ISPS who work like the dispatching and receiving post offices. Then we can do the file transfer through internet. The file transfer program, FTP, it allows transfer of files or softwares from one computer to another connected to the internet. Next is the World Wide Web, the main application. The computers that store specific information for sharing with others provide websites either directly or through web service providers. Next, this information can be made accessible to the users. Several search engines are there like Google, Yahoo, etc. which help finding information by listing these related websites. Hypertext it is one of the powerful feature of the web. It automatically it links relevant information from one page on the web to another using HTML. What is the full form? Hypertext markup language. You should know all the full forms. WWW is World Wide Web. HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Then e-commerce, use of the internet to promote business using electronic means such as using credit cards is called e-commerce. Customers can do online shopping from home or from office. Goods are dispatched or services are provided with the company through mail, courier. All this can be done through e-commerce. Then chat. See this we relate. Every one of us relate with this word chat, right? Real-time conversation among people with common interests through typed messages is called chat, WhatsApp chat. Everyone belonging to the chat group gets the message instantaneously and can respond rap rapidly. See, all this we are doing in our day-to-day -day life, but then we, ca we can't put them into sentences, right? That's why I made sentences and I am mm, explaining it by displaying because it is important for us. You can pause the video, you can read it out and you can also hear to what I am telling. Next is facts. Facts. Actually, facts means it is facsimile. F A C S I M I L E. That we call as F A X. What is facts means it scans the contents of a document. It can be an image, not a text. Okay, just an image, the photo, to create electronic signals. These signals again they are sent to another fax machine using telephone lines. Internet is not used here. Telephone lines are used. Earlier it was very much useful. We, we used to send fax to the other fax machine, right? Along with the phone number, people used to give their fax numbers also. At the receiving end, the signals, they are reconverted into a replica of the original document and you can have the photo. If I send the fax here, you get the fax there, you have the photocopy of the same document. Now comes the mobile telephony, the very important device nowadays. The concept of mobile telephony was developed first in 1970s. This system divides the service area into a suitable number of cells centered on an office called MTSO. What is the full form? Mobile Telephone Switching Office. Each cell it contains a low power transmitter called a base station and supplies to a large number of mobile receivers. Means what are they? the mobile receivers here? Our cell phones. Each cell could have a service area of a few square kilometers or even less depending upon the number of customers. We know that, right, the big uh, um, tower, the mobile phone tower, they are the service uh, stations, okay. When a mobile receiver crosses the coverage area of one base station, it is necessary for the mobile user to be transferred to another base station. This procedure is called handover or handoff. This process is carried out very rapidly to the extent that the consumer does not even notice it. Mobile telephones, they operate typically in the UHF range of frequencies. UHF means 
ultra high frequency range what is that frequency range 800 to 950 megahertz 10 to the 6 hertz okay so this is the procedure how we can talk over phones now see i have made a table of few services like standard amplitude modulation broadcast frequency modulation broadcast television cellular mobile radio satellite communication and all this i have given you the frequency bands and also i have given you whether they are very high frequencies or the tv uh, frequency or the ultra high frequency or the mobile to base station or uplink or downlink if you are talking about the satellite communication you can pause the video or you can take the screenshot and you can learn these numbers these are very very important now maybe i have missed a few points in this lecture so what i have done is i have collected uh, many questions the mcqs based on communication systems and then i'm going to discuss those questions in front of you i'm sure that any question asked in hstr or christ will be from these only so you have to carefully watch the lecture so let's start the discussion few points which maybe i have missed i can include there also so we can learn new points also there the first question is a basic communication system consists of antenna radius of earth receiver none of these it is a receiver right we had transmitter channel and receiver the messages fed to the transmitter are generally what are they they are audio usually transmitter we send the audio messages major parts of a communication system are transmitter and receiver receiver and communication channel transmitter and communication channel transmitter receiver and communication channel yes it is option d next the range of frequency of audio signal is what it is it is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz we have done this in the chapter sound also okay if you are a gps tier aspirant then you can rightly answer this question next question basic components of a transmitter are the basic components are message signal generator and modulator and antenna this i have not told in the lecture you can just note it down now the basic in the transmitter in the transmitter there are three basic components message signal generator modulator and antenna the purpose of a detector at the receiving end is means what is the purpose of a detector if it is placed at the receiving end what does the detector do at the receiving end means it will demodulate the signal so option d will be the right answer which of the following is an example of broadcast mode of communication that we know it now right it should be radio and television modem is a short form of it is a short form of modulator demodulator this modem we use this device in internet if you have a wi-fi or a internet connection at your home you will know it the modem the black box it is a modulator and demodulator next question basic components of a transmitter are the same repeated question we know it now right message signal generator modulator and antenna which among the following is not a basic terminology used in electronic communication system it is telegraph we saw it in the basic terminology part right the transducer transmitter and attenuation there we did not talk anything about telegraph these are the match the following so you have to match the column one with column two with appropriate matching transducer attenuation range and bandwidth see if you match these with the definition you will know that option c is the right answer because transducer it is a device that has input in electric form or provides output in electric form then attenuation it will it is loss of strength right i told you about this then bandwidth means it is frequencies the remaining is the range so option c will be the right answer next question waves used for long distance broadcast are c for long distance broadcast they use short waves for short distance broadcast they use long waves because short waves they long last means they will not disappear soon they will travel more that's why short waves are used for long distance broadcast through which mode of propagation can the radio waves be sent from one place to another it can be sent through sky wave space wave ground wave all the three all of these are the right answers frequencies in the ultra high frequency range normally propagate by means of surface waves these are one type of waves which we have not learnt in this lecture but now i am telling you for ultra high frequency range you know the surface waves are used if the frequencies are very high then the surface waves are used modulation is the process of superimposing 
see low frequency signal is superimposed by high frequency signal that is modulation modulation is it is used to why it is used it is used to reduce the bandwidth actually the antenna it converts the electromagnetic waves into free space electromagnetic waves and then again that free space electromagnetic waves they are again converted to normal guided electromagnetic waves so that is the antenna it will receive and it will give also isn't it so option c will be the right answer in frequency modulation what happens yes the frequency of modulated wave it varies as frequency of modulating wave we are not talking about the carrier wave in modulation the modulated wave is only modulated broadcasting antennas are generally broadcasting antennas are generally they are of course vertical type we all know it right the, there is a uh, stick like thing upon which the antenna is put now this question actually it is a previous year question from hstr the question is the audio signal is changed into corresponding electrical signal using a of course it is a transducer so whatever definitions the basic terminology i have taught in this lecture you have to learn them you have to keep fundas and you have to make notes okay okay friends i hope that i helped you i understand that there was lot of text in this lecture but then it was unavoidable i needed to keep it because at least you can pause the video and you can read them if you are not understanding what i am telling because that will help you a lot in your exams okay friends that's it for this lecture so don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel okay and keep working hard thank you all the best bye